today it is Sunday. I'm hoping this records. Camera's been playing up again. We'll see how we get on. Um, so it's Sunday, so it's a week since I arrived at my parents. Week today. And yesterday was a gorgeous day, it was beautiful. Amazing colour, blue sky, really stunning. But I was busy helping my dad fix a fence that borders with their neighbours. We needed to fix in a new Aris rail that supports the, the downward planks. So we did that, which was fine. We were waiting for one, one day of no rain to be able to do that. And that was, so that was Saturday. Sunday today, no rain today. It's the only day of my trip down where there's no, guaranteed no rain apart from yesterday. And I've decided to come out on a walk. I've hardly done any moving about since I got down here, which is one of the problems of being down here and being probably a bit lazy, being distracted by other people and different routines, and also just the lack of weather to get out and do anything. I have no interest in walking in heavy rain just because I'm supposed to walk. Um, but what I'm doing today is I'm going to walk, or as you can see I'm walking down what is one of the main roads through, uh, it goes around the side of the village. And I'm going to show you where this solar panel farm is going to go in, this solar farm. Um, it's my walking route anyway. So this is the main road where the cabling, the main cabling will go. And I'm just walking down, walking down into the valley. It's cold today, it's only about nine degrees. I've got a hoodie on and I know that I'll warm up pretty quick because I'm not very fit and my temperature jumps pretty fast when I actually start moving around. Um, but it's still as anything, there's no wind at all really nice and still which is great perfect walking weather and I'm just going to do my usual circuit that I would do when I was down here which walk down into the valley it's a lane across the valley and then back up the other side which is where I often do my talks from when I'm down here I tend to keep my hikes from down here to the local area I don't really want to be going out in the car there aren't any like hikes across moors or anything around here and anywhere you go is generally paid for parking and very touristy and I'm down here to see family not to disappear off into other places but this will probably this will probably do me a couple of hours So I'm going to turn you around and then you can see where I'm going and you can see where these cables are going to go. So the cable will go all the way up there and all the way up around the village. So I'm just going to turn you around. And now we're walking down the hill. And the cable will continue to run all the way down here. So this isn't just a country road. There are lots of houses through the trees on that side. There was a house just there on the left. There's another house coming up on the left. And then at the bottom there are several properties as well. So this would all have to be dug up for cables. 
and this is quite a narrow road. You can't always get two cars passing down here, although it probably looks quite wide from here. So there's access to another property there. Oh, there's three properties there actually at the end of that road. This is such a lovely walk. I love coming through here. Look at all that greenery. You can hear the church bells in the background at the other end of the village. It's a lovely Sunday morning sound. A very historic church locally. And you can see there's a turn on the right there. Just see when the clarity changes on my phone. See, country lane, Sunday morning, and it's actually quite busy. So we're going to walk left first, which I wouldn't normally do. The cable will run down here. This property has recently turned into a potter's barn where they run courses and it's an arts and crafts studio. So how that's going to change I don't know. So we walk around here. And I'm just going to cross over. Cable will keep running down that road. And then just on the right around that next bend is a right hand turn. right hand turn which goes up the hill uh, and that is going to be where they're going to Hello. going to put um, the substation we think for this solar farm so the cable will run all the way down here and connect up somewhere here there's another property there you can see and there's another one a bit further on um, and this is currently a footpath and this is going to be covered in solar panels And this is going to be covered in solar panels. So this land, which currently doesn't get used much, it's grazing land, it's not agricultural in that sense. It's just grazing land on both these fields. Those are going to be covered in solar panels for anywhere up to 10, 15, 20 years. But that's not all of it. That's only a small amount of it. So, 
We're going to now double back on ourselves. Going to walk back up this road. We're going to turn left here and follow the lane down here at the bottom of the valley. So through these trees is the boundary of that field, that second field that I showed you. You can see that through the trees. So that's all going to be solar panels. I get a lot of problem with fly tipping down here. And the problem with living in the country is that people will find you a good place to dump their rubbish become quite a problem out here. And they do have strategies for dealing with it but of course it's all council based and it costs money so things tend not to happen at any great speed if at all and it's such a shame because these are beautiful beautiful places so through there's the field, up here is all lined with properties which you can't really see from the road but it's an extension of the village all the way down here. Still following the length of this field. Still, <laughs> this will all be solar panels. There are still properties up here on the right. My dad has a particular interest in all this because he was an electrical engineer, as I've mentioned many times before. He worked in London pretty much his entire working life working for the London Electricity Board. So he's a man who knows about electricity. So he's very good at explaining things. And one of his concerns about this is if we have lots of solar panels and cables and things and we get very hot seasons. Remember 2022 when it was 43 degrees? These things have a tendency to catch fire and if your fields and your tree lines are also dried out we do run the risk of wildfires. And I remember two years ago there were people's roofs catching a light. It was so hot. And I think that was a mixture of solar panels, but also just where people's loft areas became so hot they just spontaneously combusted. It's just terrifying. I don't suppose anyone's thought of that. Well, maybe they probably have. But there's a lot of cons which get swept aside, like 
how this is going to affect the countryside, the wildlife, the condition of the land. And my dad says that there will be almost certainly be a loophole that once they come in and take out these solar farms after they've done their time, that that land will now be designated suitable for building of some type. They can change the designation, which wouldn't surprise me. Always worth bearing that in mind. So there's a gate here. So we'll pop through here briefly. I'm not gonna walk up this way. So this is the other end of where I was standing at the gates. So right in the distance there, there is the gates where I was standing and I've walked all the way down the lane that runs along the side here. So everything that you can now see will be covered in solar panels and that includes the field that you can see beyond the tree line at the end of this field right up and over the top. This is going to be covered in solar panels for 10, 15, 20 years. So just hold that thought and imagine what this is going to look like probably within the next year. And it's not a case of just plonking a few panels in on some stands and walking away. There's an entire infrastructure that has to be built in here. They've got to dig cables down. They've got to put the infrastructure in. It's going to be incredibly disrupting and damaging. Hear that? What you're going to be able to hear at some point is the low hum of electricity. If you've ever stood below a pylon, an electrical pylon, and they have that low hum of electricity, that is going to be a constant here at ground level. And you think, oh, well, it's just a noise. But if you're living next to that noise, and if you are bird life, who is singing like they are now, trying to get your messages across to other birds, you're being drowned out by the low hum of electricity. So, let's walk back to the gate now. the line there's a small stretch of woodland here and behind it there's another field and guess what that's going to be? So all the way back from there, joining the other field by a tree line, is another field, which is also part of the solar panel farm.
think this bit of woodland is private land because, look, all fly tipping, because there are signs all over it saying private property keep out. And I think that somebody, I think somebody was living on it for a while. And there looked to be some kind of encampment on it for a while, but I don't know if it's still here. Robins singing everywhere here. It's so nice to hear robins. You don't hear them at home. bit of woodland in there. It's nice that we have these borders, they're really important to the wildlife. These are nature's motorways which make it safer for animals to travel around when there are so many roads. And even down here you'll see animals hit on the road because they drive like nutters down these lanes. I love trees. So that's the bridal way I would often walk up to get to the top of the valley. It's been there for donkey's years. I used to hack my pony up there and ride along the top of the valley. So we've now turned left along the lane, like a, it has a bow in the lane, and we're still walking along and we still haven't had a look at this field on the left and I'm not sure if there is an access for it you know I think there used to be I'm sure there was an access somewhere along here but you can't see it so that field's all along there and then here is another field now there are public footpaths through these fields but I would have to have gone up through that second field to follow them and I'm not in the mood for that today. So we'll carry on along here and then somewhere there's bound to be a break or well, we can have a little look through. But I'm also going to give you a wider overview a bit later on to give you another idea of how much land this is going to take up. So we are still walking the length of the fields that are going to have solar panels on them. Now the field to the right is not in this proposal, thankfully. might be able to walk up here. Let's have a look. There's a gate at the end. 
Never been up here. Now you can't see the f oh, well you can actually. So that is one of the fields that you couldn't see. That's going to be covered in solar panels and this field is going to be covered in solar panels. And this field runs all the way along there, up and over and down to the next junction that we're going to go for. So this old field over here is safe as far as we know. to do a lot of that and convince myself I was enjoying it but I never did down to the junction now. Here's the rest of that field I just showed you sloping downwards. So although it's all fields on the other side here, and you can see that up there there's a property. There are little hidden properties scattered all the way around here. Most of them are very historic, because this is historically agricultural land, which has been here. Well, not these properties, but this has been a settled area since before Roman times. They found villas and mosaics and all sorts of things around here, and early Roman settlement, and even Neolithic, they found flints and arrows and all sorts of things over time. So it's a wonderfully historic area and there's lots of information about it available. So we're just dropping down a little bit now. Everywhere. One, two, and there's some people right out in the distance. There's a few here, and there's a couple over the road there as well. And so this junction represents the border, this corner field here, which I'll show you in a minute. There's a very old, very old farm there that's been there for donkeys hundreds of years. We're going to go up on the left here, there is a footpath and follow that line across to the woods and 
then there's a track all the way through. So we'll go that way. That's slightly different to where I was going to go, but it won't make any difference. to that corner and then up and around and that'll give us a good walk. Just need to find the access which is down here somewhere. feel about solar farms. There hasn't really been much of a much of a consultation on this I don't think. Beautiful little properties. I'm sure there's a gate along here somewhere. Um, yeah look at that. Lovely cat slide roof there. I think I've missed the entrance. No, is this it? <laughs> they kept that well hidden, didn't they? Let's go through. everywhere. So, <laughs> it's different. We'll stick to the boundaries. So you get a better view actually now of that field that I was trying to show you. That's the last field there. That, all that green that you see is going to be covered in solar panels. going to really change the landscape, that's for sure. So I'm going to follow this edge here. Not that one because that'll take me way out of my way. I'm going to follow this along here. And follow this tree line. see them in their high-vis, some horse riders there. <laughs> Sundays in the country are so busy. Look at my unfit state. I'm going to stop for a moment and dig out my water bottle. Here's another view. You look at the line of green behind that tree line, all the way along there is the road I've just walked, which is all going to be solar panels. And I know I keep saying this and I keep going on about it, but this is a massive impact on a place like this. You might think, wow, we need green energy, but it's not as simple as saying, we're going to harness the power of the sun with glass and metal and plastic and wires and it's not going to cause any problems. Everything comes with pros and cons and I think the money wins out over the cons. It's 
another detectorist up here. Somebody's house here. Look at that for a view of your, from your house. So you can see that beautiful valley. So there, that green field there is the boundary, and again, all the way across there. It's going to ruin the view, <laughs> that's for sure. This is one of my, my favourite walks and my favourite views around here. I often come up here all seasons to look at these wonderful rolling hills, which are not going to be rolling hills. It's going to be a sea of glass, black glass. the little grass track we're going to follow all the way up. There's the horse riders disappearing into the distance there. I can see more people down there. I wonder if that's more... More detectorists. Wow, they're really going for it here. I have never seen metal detectorists on this land. Although I would imagine they do come in here. I don't know what they're looking for, whether there's been a, a discovery or they're just doing the rounds. Sorry, Sorry for yeah. getting in the way. No, you're right. Yeah, is this just like a standard thing you do regularly, or uh, I've different. never seen you guys here before. Yeah, I think it's um, amazing. I love all this. Yeah, well, a lot. Of, they do find some good stuff. Yeah, because this whole area is like how it goes back to like Rome yeah, and all that sort yeah. of thing, isn't it? But um, yeah, I won't really know until the end when they all meet up and, and show and show all their findings. Yeah, so I've got a nice little Roman chain you can have if you want that. <laughs> That's and all I've seen before. You find you'll carry on to that. So you get to get, get permission from the farmer and then you can yeah, just come like and blitz it for one day and that's it. It's sort of like thing. a club, so. Yeah. Um, Are you a local club or just like Kent? Medway. Or yeah, Medway. Well, Medway History Finders, they're called, but they come oh, yeah. all over. Lovely. Yeah, we normally get like 100, 100, 100 people doing it. Because there's loads of people down there and all by Yeah, there's that field over there they was on. I think there's another yeah. one as well. Let's say the farmer gets like a nice. Uh, he uh, gets half the money, so... Yeah, well, if you find but, anything of any value, that's good. Yeah, well, yeah, he still gets paid anyway. Do you pick up all the metal bits? So yeah. I guess you get to clear the field for yeah. all the rubbish there. Yeah. That he doesn't want there. Oh, well, good luck. Yeah. I hope you, uh, right, hope you find something good. Yeah, enjoy your day. <laughs> and you. Thanks, See ya. So I don't know if you heard any of that conversation. I think I might have still been recording. I'm not sure. They're from a Kent-based archaeological group and there's about a hundred of them and they've all come out just to scan the fields and see if there's anything interesting because as I said the history in this area goes back thousands of years which is all very interesting so that was the solar farm future tour, which is all very disappointing. Um, because it is going to destroy the vista. And it is going to upset the balance of nature. And the only people who will benefit 
are going to be the farmer who's renting his fields out, which apparently he gets good money for. And I can understand why he does it, because farmers don't make money at all in this country anymore. And you have to go where the money is, and if covering your field in glass panels makes more money than grazing sheep and farming potatoes, because the supermarkets drive their cut into the ground because of their greedy corporate companies and of course consumers want everything for the cheapest possible price farmers will do what they have to do it's that or quit farming and if the land goes up for sale it'll probably end up being houses anyway because they are desperate to get their hands on as much countryside as possible to build on under some wild illusion that's going to solve the problem of housing, which it won't. Because it never does. <laughs> housing will never outpace the growth of the population. In part because so much of our population isn't homegrown. It's not about us building homes for families here. It's about keeping up with the pace of people who are arriving in the country. The population has swelled enormously, both legal and Ill illegal. And the only way they will keep up with it is by building on all the green land. And when we have no green land, and we are living in on a planet that looks like something out of a sci-fi movie, Maybe then we will realise the mistakes we made. But I don't think we care. Because at the moment everyone wants a house. Many still won't get them. And companies want money. So the only winners in the solar panel game are the farmers. The companies who are putting the things in. And the energy companies because our energy bills aren't going to go down just because it's UK grown green energy it might be a more reliable source of energy in that we won't have to rely on countries outside for our energy but they're not going to put the prices down they're, they're here for profit, not for people so it's not going to benefit people like you and me. And don't be under any illusion that it will be. Because it won't. Let's have a look at another field. by a dog. I'll have to go to the wash when I get back, never mind. We can cope with these things. Ah. Yeah, sorry that view wasn't terribly tranquil. The shooting of birds in the background. That's depressing. a few flowers lurking. When I was helping my dad yesterday, we went next door because we had to screw in this Aris rail. And uh, he's laid out his plastic on the grass and laid out the tools and stuff. Oh, look, look at the bees. Look at some lovely little honey bees just hanging around us. And then, as my dad got going, 
the number of bees increased and it increased and at that point I realised we had disturbed a wild honeybee nest. They had their burrow just under the edge of the fence into the ground right where we needed to work and my dad is just the coolest cucumber. He was just very relaxed, didn't make any sudden movements and he kept working. That was insane, I was getting really worried because I thought if the bees suddenly get really upset and they turn on him, multiple bee stings is probably going to kill someone who's nearly 80. So I was very jumpy, so he worked his way along the fence getting closer and closer to where the bee hole was and he would do a bit, come away, let them calm down a little bit, do a bit more and he just kept going and the bees just flew around him and kept an eye on him and after about an hour we were done and we pulled out and the bees were fine. Um, we didn't tell our neighbour he had bees. I mean, end of September and he hasn't noticed so they can't be causing too many problems. But our neighbours aren't exactly fond of nature. The previous neighbours that we had for many, many years, the garden was lovely. They grow their own veg and beautiful roses and lovely trees in the garden. And then when the neighbours moved in, my God, it must be 20, 15, 20 years ago now, they flattened the whole lot. And it's just a flat green lawn now with nothing in it. So we didn't tell him about the bees because we were afraid that he'd get somebody in to come and dig them out. They're just wild honeybees. But it was still quite an active nest. They were all coming in with pollen sacs. But I assume, uh, assume that probably next month they will really start to wind down and that will be the end of that hive. And I don't know whether they'll come back to the same hive next year. But it was lovely to see. I've never seen a hive of wild bees. I've seen wasps and we get hornets who nest in the roof eaves next door. We get one, one hornet who moved in a couple of years ago. It started off trying to nest in the garage and Dad stopped it because it was eating out the mortar between the bricks. And then it moved to the neighbour's roof and it's probably living in a corner of the loft. And you would hear it flying in and out and the noise, these things are huge but it's not the angry ones, it's the British ones. And they're more docile, and as long as you leave them alone, they'll do their thing. They make very small hives. And then, and they go again. So that was a nice walk. Um, A little bit tainted by the prospect of what's to come. Let's walk through here, then we'll be back on the main road that's going to have the cable running along it because we've done a loop around the fields. And then we'll go home a cup of tea. Tell mum and dad about the detectorists because they'll love that, they love all that sort of thing. And then that'll be my little excursion over with. I've done about 6,000 steps. It's pretty good. It's more than I've done in the last week. And it's good just to blow out the cobwebs. If I could do this sort of mileage every day in these kinds of conditions, it would be great, but it's not possible. Certainly not where I live. So I'm just making the most of it. So here's the main road, which will have a cable running all the way along it. So let's walk home. I'm going to 
put you down because I need to finish my litre of water, which I've hardly had any of yet. And then I'll feel like I've ticked off my list of things for the day. Oh, what's that? little towel. I'm going to take that home, get that washed and use that in my car, I think. Right. So that's my excursion for the day. Pads out this vlog because there's not an awful lot else going on and I can't really record at home. Um, nobody I know in real life knows I run a YouTube channel. I briefly mentioned the business one but that's a whole different thing and I don't really know anyone that uses YouTube like I do or social media at all so that's really good because I don't really want anyone I know watching my YouTube I like the f knowing the fact that all the people who are watching me don't actually know me I don't know why I find that comforting I guess it's an introvert thing <laughs> I like to be anonymous and although you probably feel like you know lots about me because in a way you do in a way you don't because you don't actually know me you see me as a face on a screen talking sometimes complete rubbish sometimes very good things and that's what you know about me and that's all that really matters I think anyway so I'm going to switch off now walk home and catch you on the next one, whenever and wherever that may be. Hope you've enjoyed that, depressing though it is. I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments for and against solar farms and green energy and wind farms and all that sort of thing. Um, do post your comments, always interesting to read. I know how I feel about it, um, which is, please stop, but powers that be don't care about the likes of us and what we think and that's just the way the world is now unfortunately so uh yeah gonna head home and uh, thank you for watching speak to you soon bye bye